The following is based on the opinion and personal experience of the creator and is not officially linked, supported, or recognized by the USN, DON, or DOD. Hey guys, it's Danny San here with this week's NFAX. Um, in today's NFAX, we're going to be going over uh, a question posed to me by a, a longtime viewer and uh, commentator, I guess you could say. Uh, this one's mostly about um, tech based rates. Uh, more specifically my rate as a uh, sonar technician. I hope you guys can kind of uh, glean some uh, info from this one. Uh, even if you're not you know, going for a tech-based rate, you can still kind of get some uh, good info out of this. So without further ado, let's begin this week's question. Hey Andy, I know you probably get a lot of messages, but I wanted to pick your brain about our rate as a STG. If you can find the time at MEPS. They really never gave me a lot of information on my rate at all. All I know is that I'm a sonar tech on a surface ship and I'm in the advanced electronics field. That's it. First, what exactly am I going to be doing in the Navy? Maybe not exactly, but a rough idea would be nice. Second, how many schools are you going to? Where are they? And how long before I get additional orders? I'd appreciate any information you can give me. I talk to my recruiters, but when I do, all I say is, We've never had an AEF STG recruit through this station, so I really don't know. That job is classified to us, even blah 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 blah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I apologize for the kind of odd wording, but you know, whatever. So, I wrote her back, and here's what I said. First off, uh, thanks for the email. Yeah, my recruiters and the counselors at MEPS gave me the same runaround as far as not explaining my rate very well. Although they did say that I picked a great rate. <laughs> when it comes to what we do out in the fleet, I've heard bits and pieces, but nothing that I can substantiate on, so right now I can't really tell you much about that. What I can explain is what we do right after boot camp. If you're wondering about the advanced electronic field, or AEF, thing, in a nutshell, it means that you're in the Navy for six years instead of four, meaning your active time ratio. Um, let me kind of uh, break away from this for a sec. Um, when you sign a contract with pretty much any branch of the military, it's not just a Navy thing, you're essentially signing up for eight years. But the whole, I'm going to be in for four years and get out thing, um, that's your active duty time. When you get you know, out of your active duty time, you get put on uh, inactive reserve, which is different than Navy reserve. But inactive reserve basically means that if they need you, they can pull you back. So you're not really out of the Navy until after you served eight years. So <laughs> just saying. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about, the ratios change. Normally it's four years active, four years inactive. But with me, being in an advanced electronics field, um, the ratios change. So I'm active for six years and inactive for two. So and the reason behind this is because I have more schooling than most of the other rates. So they tacked on an additional two years of active. So anyway, back to the question. Da, 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 da. Okay, what I can s explain is what we do right after boot camp. If you're wondering about the advanced electronic field thing, in a nutshell, it means that you're in the Navy for six years instead of four, like I said. You attend apprentice technical training, ATT, at TSC in Great Lakes for about eight weeks, depending on how long you're on hold and all that fun stuff. You attend C school after A school, and you become a third class petty officer, which is an E4, as soon as you complete your time and rate as a seaman, E3, which is six months after you, when you become a seaman, and uh, you complete A school. Okay, <laughs> that's a little confusing, but uh, I hope you guys uh, got that. Okay, so let me explain how TAR, otherwise known as time and rate, works. Using me as an example, I became a seaman apprentice, which is an E2, right after I graduated boot camp, which was August 20th of uh, 2010. Since the TIR from E2 to E3 is nine months, I have to wait until May 20th of 2011 to be promoted to E3. And then, I have to wait until November 20th, 2011 to be promoted to E4, upon completion of A school, of course. Normally, you have to take an exam to become an E4. However, because of that AEF that we six years get, 
we simply become E4s. We're commonly called push buttons because we're automatically promoted to E4 as if by the push of a button. As far as schooling goes, there's a lot of it for us six years, although not quite as much as those in the nuclear field. Or nuclear. <laughs> I can't pronounce that word. First, we attend apprentice technical training, ATT, in Great Lakes at the base right across the street from Recruit Training Command, RTC, where boot camp is. Depending on how long you're on hold for, as well as how long it takes you to complete ATT, you could be there for, for about two to three months total. For me, ATT was extremely hard. Now, keep in mind though, that I've been out of high school for six years and out of college for three years, so I was severely out of practice when it came to studying and just getting stuff done. Also, while I have a good working knowledge about computers and gadgets and the like, I was totally clueless when it came to the har hardware end of the spectrum. For example, I had no idea what capacitors or resistors were or what they did. However, once I started to relate to the subjects to the components of a guitar, or a guitar amplifier more specifically, then things got interesting and I began to improve. Also, uh, the last instructor that I had before I graduated was extremely helpful with explaining the material, so I would often pick his, I would often pick his brain whenever I could. After you complete ATT and get your orders and all that fun jazz, you'll fly over to sunny San Diego to attend STGA school. However, you'll, you'll most likely be on hold for a while until there's an open spot in a classroom for you. Don't see this as a bad thing. This is a good opportunity to not only work on your qualifications for watch standing and stuff, but to explore the local area and just relax after the whole ATT thing. Hope this, help, hope this helps, and good luck in boot camp. Okay. That was question number one. <laughs> so, here is question number two. From the same person, by the way. Thank you so much for clearing that up. One more question I do have. Is it possible to fly home while on hold or even while in school? I like to come home and see my family after boot camp if it's possible. My brother, sister, and boyfriend won't be able to fly up and see me graduate. It'll be around the end of the school year for them, so I'd like to uh, come home and see them before I get started with the uh, shit ton of school I have before me. Sounds like fun though. And I wrote her back, and here's what I said. Although I don't know the specifics because in the military, every situation is different. But from my understanding, you can't take regular leave when, or while you're in a student or hold status unless it's during a stand down or is otherwise approved by the chain of command. Now I did recently find out um, after I sent her this that you can uh, go on leave if you're on a hold status, but not if you're a student. But like I said, this varies from command to command. This could be just my command saying that, and it might be different elsewhere. So definitely, uh, definitely check with the higher ups before you say, "Well, he said that we could go on leave," and all that other stuff. So, when in doubt, take it up with your chain of command. Okay. Anyway, back to the question. Um, yeah, you can't take regular leave while you're in student hold status unless you're in stand or, or is otherwise approved by the chain of command. This is how I am able to come home for Christmas, even though I'm on a hold status. I know it'll suck not seeing your family and boyfriend for a long time. Heck, I haven't been home since I left for boot camp six months ago. But at least you'll be able to call and email them when you get out of boot camp. And when you do come home, all that time apart will seem to vanish and it'll seem like you left yesterday. I know I mentioned this odd perception of time before, and it seems weird talking about it now, but you'll understand it when it happens to you. Once again, thanks for the email, and be safe during the holidays. Of course, keep in mind, if you couldn't tell, uh, I wrote that during uh, the Christmas time that I was home on leave. And at that time, I hadn't uh, actually been home since I left for boot camp in June. So it was good to uh, see my puppies again, uh, hanging out with my brothers, um, and just being home. Uh, but I haven't been home since I uh, came back here in January. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for today. So, yeah, this is the Andy San, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for uh, tuning in and uh, submitting all these uh, wonderful questions. Um, uh, be sure to check out my uh, entirely NFAC-related channel. Um, if you don't want to wade through my personal channel just for NFACs, uh, go ahead and subscribe to uh, youtube.com slash nfax. That's N-F-A-Q-S. Um, all in word.
So if you don't want to wade through my other stuff and want to get just the end facts, um, be sure to subscribe to that channel because I'll upload them to my Andy San channel as well as my end facts channel. But my end facts channel is strictly for end facts. So yeah, this is me, the Andy San, signing off for now. Once again, thanking you guys for uh, tuning in, for rating, commenting, subscribing, telling your friends, um, and for submitting all these wonderful questions so far. Um, yeah, this is, I know I've said this before, but uh, this is honestly you guys' show. I mean, yeah, I do the research and uh, talk about my experiences and whatnot, but if it wasn't for you guys uh, submitting questions and uh, commenting and all this other stuff, I really wouldn't have much to go by. I mean, you know, I just, <laughs> there's even stuff that, you know, I wouldn't even think of that you guys are asking me. So, uh, yeah, just uh, keep up with the good work, and as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.